Hey everyone, it's Billy Carson. I told you I'd be right back. I was just on with Gaben Sarial from The Ark. I want you guys to click the like button. Make sure you share this video. Make sure this video goes out, goes out to everyone. Get your kids to watch what I'm talking about tonight. I'm going to be talking about the power of gratitude. I'm going to be talking about the importance of gratitude. What is gratitude? Let's go deep into gratitude tonight and talk about something that can literally change you from the inside out. All right, I'll be right back. Hello, hello, hello. It's Billy Carson, a.k.a. Forbidden Knowledge. Welcome back. I was just literally live just a few minutes ago with the Ben Sarial uh, from The Ark talking about this new breakthrough with XRP and the SEC. They won the case today, the case that had been pending for several years, actually. Uh, I remember when I bought all this XRP, which a.k.a. Ripple, this coin, and then, um, man, it looked like it was going to do all this crazy stuff. And all of a sudden, they got slapped with this SEC lawsuit. And then a lot of platforms started uh, uh, li literally taking it off of their platform. It got deplatformed on so many apps. And a lot of us got stuck with this XRP Ripple uh, coin. And now, today, huge, huge win, as I was talking about earlier on the previous little pop-up podcast I did a few minutes ago with Gaben, that they actually won that lawsuit against the SEC and which is going to set a benchmark for all future coins going forward as to what is, uh, as long as you follow all the laws, what is a legal coin? What is a coin that follows all the rules and regulations uh, that you know make it not a security or have a securities fraud issue? So this is a huge win for DeFi and crypto. Big, big win today. Uh, so for everyone who sat on the XRP, congratulations. Uh, you know, you have, uh, <laughs> your coin is back. <laughs> so uh, congratulations on that. But today we're going to go into gratitude. Tonight we're going to go into gratitude. Make sure you share this video. Uh, please share the video. Get it out there to as many people as you possibly can. I'm just looking at seeing who's in the chat right now. The chat's starting to fill up. That's great. All right. I appreciate y'all. And by the way, I'm going to drop a link to what we were talking about previously uh, just a few minutes ago. If you weren't on that live uh, in the in, you know, in the chat, we were talking about getting a consultation with the ARC. The ARC is a, is a DeFi training company. They literally train you in DeFi. They actually get you a hard wallet. I have a hard wallet. I don't have my crypto on apps. My crypto is not running around on apps. Apps, when you have your crypto on an app, you're not in crypto. My crypto is on a hard wallet that's in my fireproof safe. And when I need to access it, I take it out of my safe and I plug it into my computer and I move it around instantaneously anywhere I want. And so, um, you know, you need to know how to actually really do crypto the right way and do DeFi the right way. And that's why I recommend getting a free consultation from the ARC and learn how to become your own bank. So I'm going to drop a link here in this chat before I begin this talk right now. I'm going to drop a link to how you can really literally request and register for a free consultation. All right. Um, and you can actually uh, get a phone call or an email. And you can be taught how to do it the right way, like I like I did eight months ago, and learn how to generate passive income. They're doing amazing things like tokenized real estate, all right, um, which is incredible because you're talking about having your crypto backed by real estate. They're doing a lot of really really amazing things, which is why I like the Ark, and they really held my hand and walked me through everything step by step, taught me how to get all of my crypto from all these apps that I had them on. I had them on like six or seven different apps because some apps don't get you this coin. Some apps don't let you get that coin, whatever. They got me to get all of my crypto and send it all to my hard wallet. 
which is this device that literally plugs right into your computer. But the be beautiful thing about it is I could take that hard wallet anywhere I want in the world, access it through the um, blockchain and transfer crypto anywhere I want instantaneously or cash it out and transfer it to any bank account I want anywhere in the world instantaneously. So, you know, listen, it's the way to go. Click that link I just dropped in the chat. I'm going to drop it in the chat right now. Um, let me just type in here. Get a consultation. All right, I'm going to drop it in the chat right now and uh, learn, learn what I learned. All right, I started eight months ago with about $7,000. My cost average, my dollar average in has me right now around $359,000. Uh, you know, so just check it out. Something for you to look into, something, a way to make passive income, uh, and a way for you to generate money for your family, build your legacy fund, which is what I'm using mine for, my legacy fund. All right. Okay, guys, thank you for getting on. I think we're, the chat is probably as full as it's going to get for this moment. I really want everyone to share this video. Please click the like button. That's really important for the app, for, for the algorithm. All right. Please click the like button uh, as we get ready to start this talk about gratitude. Very, very important for the algorithm. All right. I'm going to type it in right now in the chat. Please click the like button. Now, I know about maybe, I don't know now, maybe five years ago or four years ago, I did a whole video on gratitude, which was on Amazon Prime. Uh, but that contract expired with Prime, so it's no longer up there. Right now, it just is unavailable. I think I can probably probably resubmit it, but I'm probably going to do it all over again and do it from scratch, do it, do it another way. Somebody said they can't see the link. Uh, let me just drop the link in here one more time for the uh, consultation. And I'm going to talk to you tonight about some of those same things that I talked about on that series that I did, I just dropped a link in the chat about gratitude. Gratitude is often taken for granted, right? We take gratitude for granted, uh, meaning when you we're, we're taught as kids to say thank you for everything, you know, out of respect, which is not wrong. It's absolutely right. It's perfect, right? You're supposed to do that. But it becomes a regurgitative act. It becomes an act where there's no actual meaning behind it, no heartfelt meaning other than being respectful. There's no deeper heartfelt meaning behind the thank you, you see? And so we have to find a way to dig deeper into the heart, into the heart chakra, to access the true energy and frequency behind gratitude, okay? When you are given something or somebody does something for you and you say, oh, thank you. Think about that for a minute, right? Somebody hands you something, somebody take care, takes care of something for you. You just say, oh, thank you. Think about it the way you've just told somebody thank you, just maybe even today. Do you remember any deep heartfelt frequency generating this love frequency coming out of your body? Or do you just remember saying, oh, thank you, out of respect? There's a difference in the depth of how you feel when you actually express gratitude, right? So when somebody does something for me, I now go into the heart. And when I speak the thank you or, I, or the appreciation or whatever other affirmation I give that person, I actually force myself to dig deep into the heart chakra and feel that as I'm saying it, I'm feeling the energy leaving from the heart. I'm expressing true, real gratitude on a high level frequency. That's going to go out into the universe. That's like a boomerang of love that's going to come back at you sometime in the future. You will meet up with that gratitude. You will meet up with that frequency sometime in the future. And it will be a positive karma, a benefit to you. So it's not that we've been doing it wrong in terms of, you know, just saying thank you, that it's respectful, it's honorable, but there's always levels to the game. There's levels to everything that we do. And so we're talking about becoming ascended masters, right? We're talking about becoming extremely highly conscious as a species on this planet, which means we have to work on perfection every single day. Every day is another opportunity to work on becoming better and better and better creating a better self than the previous day. 
this is just another step. I know it's always seeming like, man, there's so much more to do. Well, this is the job of the master. You see, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. When the teacher is ready, the master will appear. You are all three. You're the student, you're the teacher, and you have an opportunity to become the master if you so choose. That's going to take time, effort, energy, and dedication and sacrifice. Some of the sacrifice that it's going to take is working on yourself. A lot of people don't like to work on themselves because it's hard work. <laughs> you see, it's extremely hard work working on yourself because we've got a lot of programming code, a lot of negative programming code that we need to have to rewrite. We have to rewrite ourselves. We have to reprogram ourselves, go in and edit the code, hack our own code. And this can be done through conscious thought, action and verbal communication, like speaking out loud. Right. And one of the biggest benefits that we have that we can give someone as a free gift that doesn't cost us any money in the monetary system, the economic system, right, is gratitude. And oftentimes we don't give them the total amount of gratitude that a person actually deserves. I remember I was in Cambodia in uh, I think it was 2017, I went to Cambodia. What a trip, an amazing trip. About 38 hours to get there. So that was the longest trip of my life in terms of traveling around the planet. I was like, man, when am I gonna get to this place? Finally get to Cambodia. It's about 110, 120 degrees every single day <laughs> with 100% humidity every single day. Wow, there's no power grid there. So every individual structure has to have its own power generator. And as soon as you leave your hotel room, the power cuts off because they have to conserve power. So you think you're going to leave your hotel room and come back to a nice cool room after sweltering all day and you know hiking in temples and mountains and you get back and it's hotter inside than it was outside. <laughs> you got to wait about an hour to cool off, right? You got to take a cold shower. But what's incredible there, the people there are so incredible, such incredible, humble people, not humble in a way where they're relinquishing their power, but humble in a way where they're so ready to serve and be grateful for everything that they can do for you. It's pretty incredible to watch. And during this trip, I learned a lot about gratitude as uh, we went to Angkor Wat to go check out that temple complex. I had a great, great guide, uh, which I'm going to be using this same guide. In just a few months, in November, I'm taking about 50 people to Cambodia with me on a private tour. And I'm going to be the guide. And my homegrown guide there that's going to assist me is Moni Peck, homegrown in Cambodia. And he's going to take us to some of the most amazing sites you've ever seen in your life. But anyway, we're there with Moni. And um, we're going around the back side of this temple. And I see monks off in the distance. I see child monks and I see a, a couple of adult monks. And I'm like, wow, I want to go talk to the monks and take pictures with them. He's like, no, 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 you can't do that. They don't talk to outsiders. They don't integrate with outsiders. Not back here. Back here, it's extremely like private. You just can go to the restroom and just come straight back. I was like, wow, OK. As I'm walking towards the restroom in this open area where these monks have an actual house that they're, I guess that's where they're living in. I see the children monks cleaning up outside. They're sweeping, they're cleaning, they're collecting garbage, they're cleaning up any, any debris on the ground, any litter or whatever. And um, they're happy, they, they look peaceful, they're working hard. These are young kids too, probably eight, nine, 10 years old. As I'm walking by, I caught, I locked eyes with the adult monk and he saw me and he's like, and I'm like, uh oh, me? He wants me to come over. And I'm like, this guy just told me they don't interact with anybody. So I looked at the, my guy and he's like, that's rare. They never do this. So I go over and I'm having a conversation with the monk. And he speaks English. I mean, great English. <laughs> he speaks English better than most people in America. And uh, I said to him, you know, thank you. I appreciate you spending a little bit of time with me. Do you mind if I take a photo with the kids? And he said, no problem. And I took a great photo with the kids. And then I, I said to him, I said, you're cleaning so vigorously out here. I said, how do you get them to work this hard? You know, I started laughing. And he said, our mission in life, our mission in life, he says, 
is to express gratitude for everything that we do, including chores, and to do it at the highest possible level. We are to seek perfection in everything, including cleaning up. If it's sweeping a floor, we must seek perfection in sweeping the floor. If it's taking out the trash, we must seek perfection in taking out the trash. We must even seek profession, perfection in putting the trash in the garbage can. Everything must be done to perfection and expressing gratitude the whole time. I was like, wow, that's deep. Especially when I think <laughs> about, you know, just the average kid in America um, and, you know, you kill them to do chores and it's a fight, it's a battle. They don't do it right. They do it half-assed, right? It's not really done to the, to the best of their ability. They just try to mostly try to get by. Not all, but some, you know, most kids. Um, you have to remind them all the time, clean up your room, pick this up, do that, pick this up, don't do that. And these kids were excited and happy and honored and expressing gratitude to clean up and pick up trash and sweep up and wash the dishes and, and take care of their domicile. And I was like, wow, that taught me a lifelong lesson. Literally, that one small interaction that I had with that monk that day and those kids literally changed the trajectory of my life. Because I began to, uh, to, to add those same concepts to everything that I do. I actually incorporated, I adopted that into my own life to express gratitude for the, for the mundane work that has to be done, to express gratitude for the, the things that I don't feel like they're doing, the things that I feel are, are you know, shouldn't be, shouldn't be done to the highest level, like I'll just put this over here and put that over there or whatever, even if it's just putting a book down on top of my desk, right? Put it in the perfect angle, put it down, lay it down with perfection and have gratitude, expressing gratitude in the work that I'm doing every single day. Even when it gets hard, when it gets rough, when it gets tough, when the, when the hours are piling up and I'm doing 16, 17, 18 hours, or like the other day, I had to work in three states in one day. I had to work in Miami. Then I had to work in New York in the afternoon and film in the studio. Then I had to hop in an Uber and race to the airport to catch a flight and make it all the way to LA five hours to land there by eight o'clock to make it to another event that I had to host. And then the next day, waking up in just a few hours and going back to another studio and doing more work. And, and so, but again, instead of complaining, if I had never met that monk, I would have been a little agitated. You know, think about it, 17 hours on planes, your knees in one different, one position. I'm six foot four, so and I got basketball knees, so my knees getting kind of sore, you know. And uh, just being in a being in, not in a state of gratitude, but being in a state of disgust, frustration. When is this going to be over? How long do I have to do this? No, my mindset was, man, I'm happy. I'm I'm exhilarated. I'm expressing gratitude for the opportunity to be able to even do this. Thank you, Mr. Universe. Thank you, Mrs. Universe. Thank you. Everyone that's supporting and, act, and, and asking me to show up, I appreciate it. I appreciate you. I appreciate the frequency of God in this universe for allowing me to even have the life in this avatar body to be able to do these things. This is what I speak out loud. This is how you express true gratitude and how you actually add another level of essence to your life. Learning these life's lessons. Traveling the world has been my biggest, greatest teacher of all time. I know in the last two years, we hit 11 countries, 259 cities. Last year, I did six months in hotels. I've been around the world now in about, uh, around, uh, been around the world now about 18 times and been to over 29 countries. I've had to do two passport books and my second passport book is filling up with stamps. I'm going to have to order a third passport book now. It's a blessing. It's an opportunity. The average person just like, man, I just can't do all these flights. I'm sitting down in one spot for 10, 15, 20 hours, you know, and, uh, you know, getting the, the, the pressurized cabin is giving me inflammation in your ankles and your knees and everything else. 
But you got to realize the ultimate goal, the end purpose of this is enlightenment and wisdom and understanding and knowledge that you can share with the world. So express gratitude for the opportunity to be able to even suffer. It's incredible. That changed my life, right? And so there's a few things, a few key pointers that I, I wrote down that I want to go over tonight to talk about this topic with expressing gratitude and understanding gratitude, right? There's a couple things we can do to learn more about it and to, and to be more involved in the process of expressing gratitude. And I guarantee you, your life will change. Things that you saw as potentially negative or boring, once you begin to express gratitude, then it just completely changes the paradigm of whatever that task is or whatever the interaction is. It completely changes it. You totally transform into a different person. You understand things from a higher perspective, right? Like, like I said, with all the workload and the flying and this and that, prior to that, I would have been involved in the actual process and focusing on the process of what I had to do to get to where I had to get to to do what I had to do as far as the task. But in the gratitude mindset, I separated myself from that and I saw what I had to go through to be able to enlighten the world. And I, I was happy to be able to do that. It transformed my mind. There's a few things you can do to learn how to express gratitude, right? You can do the gratitude letter. So this technique is pretty interesting. You write a letter expressing your gratitude to someone who has had a positive effect on your life. You can choose to deliver it or you can keep it for yourself, keep it in your wallet or keep it in your notes on your phone or keep it in your notepad on your computer. But I recommend you actually deliver it. You can comment underneath one of their posts, or just a random post and give them a positive comment. You can send them a positive direct message because we're in the digital age now, obviously, right? Some of these notes that I wrote down was a while back before a lot of the digital age hit. But this is really something that I think everyone should do. It's called giving people their flowers while they're still alive. This is why I formed the first annual Forbidden Conscious Awards, which is coming up in just two weeks in Miami, Florida. Still a chance, still time for you to get a ticket. People said, man, why are you doing these award show? And we don't need, no, you know, people should be doing this without looking for an award and blah, 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 blah. Again, these are people talking that have never done anything for anybody in their life. But the fact of the matter is, no. I'm expressing gratitude. I'm hosting an award show that's not making a profit. It's in the red, about $60,000. And by the time we get done, it looks like it's going to be close to 80 because the ticket sales minus the amount I spent on this is going to put me about $80,000 in the red. But that's okay. That is my donation and my, me expressing my gratitude because I have the capability of doing that. You see? And I'm going to honor people while they're still alive and I allowed the people of the world to vote and help contribute to allowing us to honor these people based on their vote. Didn't cost them a penny to vote. We got in tens of thousands of votes for people. And now we have the top three nominees in each category. And the people have voted again. And we now have the winners. We know who the winners are. We can't tell you yet. You have to be at the award show to find out who the winners are. But there are winners. And the nominees are all booked. Their flights are booked. They're all coming in. They're going to be at the award ceremony. And they're going to see us express gratitude just for them doing what they've been focusing on, their passion, to teach and uplift and enlighten. A lot of these people have dedicated their life's work, their finances, time away from their families. They've taken losses. They've lost out or didn't take specific opportunities that could have put them in a better place financially because of operating in their passion to be able to teach and bring knowledge to the world. And so it's our job and our duty for all of us who have learned and gleaned knowledge and wisdom and understanding from these people to honor and show them gratitude by letting them know we care about them and we appreciate them by giving them something to say, hey, thank you from our heart chakra. Thank you. We appreciate you. You see, that's why I'm doing the award show. I mean, literally, I could have had an award show set up by somebody else and funded it and went, went there and I could have won a ton of awards for myself, <laughs> right? No, I'm not doing that. I'm pretty sure I could be nominated in each one of these categories or most of those categories that are there, at least to be nominated, but I'm not doing that either. 
I didn't allow myself to be a part of the nomination process, even though I got thousands and thousands of people who wrote my name in his votes, even though I'm not in those categories. This ain't really about me. It's about gratitude for others. You see? I'll get awards. I got an award last year at the Awakening Expo in the UK. They gave me a Lifetime Achievement Award. I'm happy. You know? I'm happy. It's time for other people to experience what I experienced and to give them awards for the work that they've been putting out. And that's why I'm doing the Conscious Awards. That's my form of writing a letter and telling somebody, thank you, I appreciate you. I'm going to give them their name engraved on a, crystal, a gigantic 10-pound crystal award. That's what we're doing. We're giving away crystal pyramids that weigh 10 pounds. Gigantic. Something that when they look at it, they're going to be like, wow, this is really a great thank you. I feel the gratitude here. You see? I think I spent $12,000 on trophies. I'm not getting them no pieces of plastic. They're getting the real deal because they deserve it. They deserve the sacrifice. You see? So that's one thing you can do. The gratitude walk. Take a walk in nature and consciously focus on the things around you that you appreciate. It could be the beauty of the landscape. It could be the sounds of the birds chirping. It could be the soil under your feet. It could be the beautiful colors of the plants and the flowers and the trees. Sometimes when I'm doing my walks, my beach meditation walks, there's palm trees where I go and they're, they're planted right along the path. I just take my time and I grab and I put my hand as I'm going by and I touch the trees and I thank the trees on my way by during my walk. Be grateful. Show gratitude to nature. Because we are nature, right? Some people, we, we take nature for granted. We literally take it for granted. Take a nature walk and show gratitude. Appreciate what you're looking at. Appreciate what you're able to be engulfed in at that moment in time. Sit in silence and listen to everything going on around you. Hear the animals, hear the birds. Hear the tree leaves wrestling and wrestling inside in the wind. Listen to that. Touch a tree. Talk to it. Thank it. Thank it for it's a chemical exchange of carbon monoxide for oxygen. How about that? You know, tell the tree, hey, thank you. Without you, I wouldn't be able to breathe. I appreciate you. We have to begin to show and express more gratitude. The other thing I have, a gratitude meditation. And by the way, I started a new meditation YouTube account a while back, but now I'm building it up. A lot of people have been subscribing like crazy. I got to put the videos and they're like, hey, we subscribe. Where's the video? So now I got about six videos up there. Now I'm going to start doing videos all the time. That YouTube account is called Forbidden Mind with the number four. Forbidden, four B I D D E N, Mind. Forbidden Mind. That's my other YouTube account. I have three YouTube accounts. I got the Forbidden Knowledge YouTube account that you're on now, the Billy Carson official YouTube account, which is just me, no other podcasters, nothing, just all Billy Carson. And then we have the Forbidden Mind YouTube account, which is mindfulness and meditation. Okay. You're going to be seeing a lot more from the forbidden mind as I've been now starting to post something every couple of days. Because a lot of people are subscribed there, but I haven't been putting anything up, just been too busy. But now we're dedicating energy towards the forbidden mind YouTube account. All right, so please subscribe. So the gratitude meditation. During meditation, direct your thoughts toward gratitude. Direct them. Focus. Be even focus. I'll be talking more about directing thoughts in the next few weeks as I'm making videos on the hemisync and how that whole thing works. How to direct a beam of thought from your own consciousness. Direct your thoughts toward gratitude. Reflect on the things you're thankful for and allow those feelings of appreciation to fill your mind. So typically what I do in this meditation is the first thing I do is I 
envision a giant bowl in my mind. And that bowl has all of my thoughts going on, right? I can see the bowl and I can see the thoughts in the bowl. Then I see a hand reaching into the bowl and taking out all of those thoughts, little by little, just grabbing a handful of thoughts and taking them out little by little, removing the thoughts in the bowl until the bowl is virtually almost empty. It's hard to get a completely empty bowl. I've never had a completely empty, but I've gotten it down to an extreme minimum. Then I begin to focus on the gratitude and I begin to think about everything that I'm grateful for. And I fill the bowl of gratitude and love and understanding and happiness and thankfulness. And that is the actual meditation. It's a gratitude meditation. It will change your life. I guarantee it. Matter of fact, I'm going to schedule a guided, a voice guided by me, gratitude meditation on the Forbidden Mind YouTube account. Okay? I'm going to do that. Forbidden Mind. Let me, let me get you guys a Forbidden Mind link real quick for those of you who don't know uh, what it is. And just drop it in the live chat so that you can come back and, uh, and you guys can subscribe to it. But like I said, I'm going to start doing guided meditations over there and everything. Um, and I have a lot of great meditation tracks that are produced by me. That I'll be putting up there. All right. So let's see. Forbidden Mind. Here you go. I'm on a live podcast. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to unfreeze it. Thank you. I Okay. I was frozen for a minute, but I'm back. A little technical glitch, but I'm going to get you guys a Forbidden Mind link right now. I'm looking up because I'm looking for on my screen behind the camera. So I can get you guys a link to Forbidden Mind, and I'm going to drop it in the live chat right now so you guys can subscribe. I'll be doing a guided, uh, a guided gratitude, not only just gratitude, but many different guided meditations. I'm even going to do couples guided meditations which are going to be incredible. If you want to become closer to your spouse or your better half or somebody that you're dating, get them in one of my couples guided meditations that I'll be doing on Forbidden Mind. All right? Make sure you guys subscribe. Sorry for that freeze. I don't know what happened, but I'm back now. Glad you guys were still able to hear my voice at least, though. So that's good. All right, let me get back into my talking points here. So we're going to do the gratitude meditation. All right, that's going to be huge. It's going to be life-changing for a lot of people. The next thing we're going to do is the mealtime gratitude. Okay, Before you eat, take a moment to express gratitude for the food in front of you. Now, I'm not the type of person that prays over my food. I don't pray over my food. I command that the food is healthy for my body. But again, I'm not an idiot either. I'm not going to command a Snicker bar be healthy for my body. I don't eat Snicker bars, but if I did... I see people praying over soul food, which is not really good for your soul. I'm not going to pray over ham hocks and collard greens with grease and, and, and some kind of greasy food that's going to destroy me and give me high blood pressure and diabetes. That's the most ludicrous thing I see. I witness people do this all the time. You know, they, uh, <laughs> they start praying over food that's going to kill them. More evidence that their prayers don't work because the food still gives them diabetes and high blood pressure. It still makes them fat. It still gives them heart attacks. And they pray over it every single day for decades until they have a stroke. We got to do better. Mealtime gratitude. Before you eat, take a moment to express gratitude for the food in front of you. Acknowledge the effort that went into its production and the nourishment it provides. Nourishment. Nourishment. Okay, this is real food, healthy food, clean eating food, not trash and junk. There's no nourishment coming out of a Snickers bar. There's no nourishment coming out of a pound of cheesecake. Come on, B, use this. Okay, we got to stop doing things that, you know, sometimes the aliens don't talk to us because of the stuff we do. <laughs> we do stuff that doesn't make any sense and no logic whatsoever. So let's, let's be smart about it. Uh, let's be smart. Nobody ever told you these things. That's what I'm here. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to tell you these things, the things that you've never heard before. 
the things you never thought about before, the perspectives you never considered before. That's my job. That's what I'm here to do. I'm here to change your paradigm by making you aware of what you weren't aware of. So please don't take offense to it. Just understand there's alternate ways of seeing things. And I'm, that's what I do. I see things in a totally different way than the average person. I've always been that way. Okay. So now, now we're going to go to gratitude buddy. Find a friend or a family member who also wants to practice gratitude. This is really important because now you're building your tribe and your frequency is going to attract and draw in more people. Each day, share three things you're grateful for with each other through a, through a text or a phone call or in person, depending on where they are in the world. Right? This is something that's really, really important to practice. I would really say five things now because the world is changing so much. We really need to enhance our level of gratitude, but at least a minimum of three things that you're grateful for. All right, so find a gratitude buddy. It could be your wife, it could be your husband, a girlfriend, boyfriend, a good friend. Um, you know, it, it, if you don't have any friends, it could be one of your relatives, it could be a, one of your kids, right? Just find um, someone that you can share this with, this frequency with. If you can do that, that'll be huge. That'll be huge for you because you guys, both of you, will begin to manifest together. You'll be, able to be, you'll be able to manifest. This technique is actually interesting. Bob Proctor, the late, great Bob Proctor, who passed away recently. This is one of the things he used to do with his wife every single day. And he lived by this. And it helped him and his wife build an empire where they were living in their passion and became financially free. Very powerful. Okay? Extremely, extremely powerful. Gratitude board. Create a gratitude board or a section on your bulletin board where you can pin up pictures or use your social media as a dream board for quotes and notes and remind yourself of the things you're grateful for. Sometimes I post things on social media or in my stories and people be like, that ain't about no knowledge. I can see the comments. I see the comments. That ain't no knowledge. What are you posting this for? This ain't knowledge. Well, it's knowledge for me. It's important to me. Everything I post ain't for everybody out there on the outside. Sometimes it's for me. Sometimes I post things that I am grateful for, people that I'm grateful for. Sometimes that's what I post. It's for me. It's for me to express my gratitude and to look at something on my own board that I'm grateful for. That I'm thankful for. Things that I've acquired that I'm thankful for. Sometimes it's literally just for me. Trips that I go on, places that I'm at, luxuries I've been able to afford for myself and my family, the people that I love, that's for me. And sometimes I post things that I don't even have yet because I'm looking to acquire them as part of my dream board, building my legacy. And I try to focus on assets. I always try to focus on things that appreciate, don't depreciate. And if they, are, if they, are, if they do have a capability of depreciating, it doesn't, it's not a rapid depreciation. It's something that can actually still, in some way, generate a profit, either for myself or the company. But I create my own dream board on my social media. I have a lot of social media accounts. I have one called Lux Manifest Magazine. You probably didn't know. That's my account. Lux Manifest Magazine. L-U-X-E Manifest Magazine. It's on Facebook and Instagram. Right? I have a lot of these types of accounts. And what I do is I post, on, I post things on there that, in, that inspire people and also things that inspire me because I still need inspiration from time to time. You see? Thank you, Eternal Abundance. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you for the gratitude. I feel that. And I send you the same level of gratitude back. See? And so, um, let me uh, pull this back down and get back here into this, these talking points. So create a dream board of gratitude. It can be a dream board of things you're looking to acquire, but also things that you already have that you're grateful for. Always express the gratitude. There's a famous meme that I posted years ago that circulated the internet like crazy. Probably hundreds of millions of 
people seen it now because it's been shared so many times. There's a kid on a bicycle and he's looking at a guy in a car at a red light. And he's, go, he's saying, man, I wish I could have a car. And while he's saying that, there's somebody walking by. And this guy is looking at the kid on the bike and he's saying, I wish I had a bicycle. And while he's saying, I wish I had a bicycle, there's another kid or a man, young man, sitting in the window of a house looking out at the guy walking saying, I wish I had legs to walk. Think about that. That's deep. We always want what somebody else has, but never grateful for what we already have. The wish of that young man in the window, looking out the window, was he wish he just had legs to walk. But the guy walking wasn't satisfied enough. He wanted the bike, and the guy with the bike wanted the car, and so forth and so on. And it's not a sin to have the car. It's not a sin to have the bike. And it's not a sin to definitely be able to walk. But the, the, the deep meaning behind this is look for more, but be grateful for what you have. Don't forget about what you already have and be thankful and grateful for that. Show gratitude for that. Because you don't even have to have that. That can be taken away from you. There's kids in America right now that have no clue what suffering is, what work is. There's grown men in America that think that gang banging and shooting guns and running through the streets like a banshee is, is cool and hard and they're, you know, thug life and this and that. These people have no freaking clue what hard life is. I can go to the deepest, hardest ghetto. I came out of Opelika in Miami. I can go to the deepest, hard, hardest ghetto in LA, Chicago. I can get the, the, the most coldest killer off the streets. Give me the coldest. Give me the, give me the guy that, that, that when he walks in the room, everybody starts shaking and peeing their pants. And let me take him to Egypt and drop him off in Abydos where you see five-year-old kids doing the hard labor of a grown man, where there's no running water, where there's no toilets, where there's no toilet paper. You got to wipe your butt with your hand. Where every building and structure is collapsing and there are no windows, no doors. And people are living in collapsed structures with sheets over the openings. And when another one falls down, it's like, hey, we got new real estate. Let's move into this collapsed structure where 100 people died in one night where I was because of no windows and no doors. And scorpions were on the run that night. They had a plague of scorpions that went into these people's houses while they slept. I mean, call them houses, broken down structures, and stung them and killed 100 people in one night because they had no windows and no doors, no running water. You see kids doing the hard, back-breaking labor of grown men, work that would make grown men cry just so they can have a couple of slices of bread that day. And the average person makes $100 a month. Give me the hardest criminal you got, the hardest gangster, and let me take him to Abydos in Egypt and leave him there for two weeks. They're living in mansions and compared to what these kids are going through over there and these people are going through over there. They're living a life of a lap of luxury compared to what's going on over there. And I guarantee you, as hard as they think they are, they will be devoured in one day by the element that's there, the real gangsters. They will be picked apart and torn to shreds. Because all that gangster stuff, that don't work over there. And people will take you down and cut you down in five seconds. And sell you to Libya into slavery. You'll be sold for 400 bucks. That's four months salary for them. You'll be in Libya in a hole in the ground. Waiting for your next destination. Is somebody either to steal your organs or put you to work for free. You got to be thankful for what you got. Stop running around and, and hurting people and injuring people and killing people and claiming this territory and that territory. Be thankful you're in America and you got a bathroom to, to use, a bathroom that you can actually sit on a toilet and you got toilet paper, running water, a bed to lay on, even if it's an air bed. I mean, you guys have no idea, man, what's going on out here on these streets. It's, 
These, these gangsters. See, they, there's no gangsters in America. These people are amateurs compared to what's going on around the world. I've been all around the world. I've been to places, man, where if you leave the hotel, you're dead. When I took the team, the group of, to, to Egypt, to Africa, uh, last, uh, last year, last October, we had four armed military guards in front of the tour bus, four armed military guards in back of the tour bus in Jeeps. Then we had armed guards on each one of our tour buses. Why do we have to do that? Because the real gangsters ain't in America. <laughs> they don't even know what gangsters are here. They don't know what thugs are here. You have no clue. You're not even close. You're not even close. Be thankful for what you have. All right. Now, bedtime gratitude. Before you go to sleep, reflect on the positive moments of your day. This is really important. A lot of us go to sleep with the turmoil, the anger, the anguish, the frustration, the toils of the day, negativity on our mind, the thing we just last watched on TV or whatever it is. Before you go to sleep, reflect on the positive moments of the day and express your gratitude for them. Sit back and meditate on them. Take some time. Take some deep breaths, breathing in five to eight seconds in through the nose and then five to eight seconds out through the mouth. But feeling the, 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 the wind or the um, breathing out coming through the heart, going out from the heart, breathing in and breathing out through the heart. That gets you into brain heart coherence. And while you're doing that, you're focusing literally on things that were good for the day. And if you can't find anything good in the day, be thankful for what you have. Be thankful for what you actually have in, in that moment. And if you can't find anything there, think of something that happened in the past that was good. Don't go to sleep with a dark mind. Inhale through the nose, exhale through the heart. And feel it in the heart chakra and be grateful and be thankful before you go to sleep. Let go of any negativity. I don't like to go to sleep with a negative mind. I don't like to go to sleep with a dark mind. Release that. Release it. Don't hold on to that. That will give you dis-ease, which turns into disease. Okay? Dis-ease turns into disease. That trauma that you're holding on to is going to make you sick. It's going to age you. It's going to destroy your telomeres faster and give you a horrible death. Release it and be grateful and be thankful before you go to sleep. Okay? And remember, the key is to make gratitude a daily habit. Anything that you want to do takes time to form a habit to do it, right? It's so easy to not do anything. It's so easy to be lazy. It's so easy to be a couch potato. It's so easy to not go to the gym. It's so easy to not be grateful for anything. It's so easy to have a bad attitude. Be being dark is easy. Being light takes work. And then it becomes easy. Because you develop, you turn it into a habit. So expressing gratitude on the level I'm trying to teach you tonight is going to take time, effort, energy, and work. It's not going to be an instantaneous thing. For most people, you're going to have to develop repetition over time and develop and work on these things I told you about tonight over time. And gradually, instead of it becoming a hard thing, it becomes part of your daily regimen and it becomes a habit. Once it becomes a habit, then it's programmed into your DNA, it's programmed into your RNA, and it becomes something, a part of, your, a part of you, a part of your life, a part of your daily, your daily mission. And it becomes a very easy thing to do. You won't even have to remember to do it anymore become, because it's such a habit. It's just part of you. It becomes part of what you are, your core. The core of you becomes this. And you become a person that expresses gratitude and gratefulness all the time. And it reflects on positivity all the time. You'll find that when you start doing this and it turns into a habit, all those negative YouTube accounts out there that go out there and hate on people and destroy people and try to and try to make up lies and all those Instagram accounts that only show you the dark, 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 nonstop, but never show you any light, you'll find that they're going to they're going to agitate you. 
you'll find that you're probably going to unsubscribe or unfollow a lot of different accounts because you don't want to see that crap on your feed because it's feeding you negativity where before it used to make you feel good to spark you and, and, and spike your cortisol and make you want to go look at this stuff. You begin to realize, man, I don't, I don't want that in my spirit. I don't want that in my soul. How can I get rid of this thing off my feed? I want to unfollow this. I got to get rid of this garbage. I don't want to hear this crap. I don't want to hear this person trying to tear somebody down for fun, for likes and views. I'm going to unsubscribe from this person. They're wasting my life away. They're embedding darkness into my spirit and my soul. You're going to start to see yourself. Trust me. You're going to start to see it. People that are around you that are dark and negative all the time, you're going to begin to remove yourselves from those conversations. You're going to want to begin to remove yourselves from their presence. You're going to remove yourself. That's exactly what's going to happen. Okay? So, gratitude is extremely important. And it's a life-changing thing that can really shift your paradigm and put you into, some, into such a high-frequency mind state that the universe collaborates with you, that the universe begins to send. You ever notice the more positive you become, the more uplifting you become, the more grateful you become, the more positivity you begin to attract, and the more gratefulness you begin to attract into your life. But we all have those friends. We have those friends that are negative all the time. They always have a sad story. Their sad stories have sad stories. They find a problem for every solution. We know those people, right? And every time they call you, you look at the phone, you're like, oh, man, damn. And you got to think twice before you even answer the phone because you know they're getting ready to hit you with some crazy, negative, dark stuff. You see the text light up. You're like, oh, man, I don't even want to read this text. They sent me a whole book. I don't want to read this book of information they sent. I know it's negative. And guess what? Every time they try to contact you, they always have a sad story. They're attracting it into their life. They're creating their own paradigm of darkness and negativity, and they're literally bathing and soaking in it 24-7. Those people are contagious. Evade and avoid them at all costs. I tell people who do that to me, listen, you can't call me and every time you call me, it's negative. You can't text me and every time you text me, it's another problem, another catastrophe. You've got to mix in something positive or don't call me ever again. This is, I tell them straight up, I don't beat around the bush. I look, man, you can't be, don't send me any more negative messages. I can't take it. And if I see another one come in, which has happened, blocked, I'll never talk to you again. I'll think positive about you and send you good vibes. But I'm not going to interact with you because darkness is contagious. It's a cancer, and I don't want it. Stay away from those people at all costs. I don't care what you've got to do. Get out of those conversations. Get away from those people. And somebody that I know recently just keep coming up to me trying to tell me this darkness about somebody else. Nonstop. Darkness, darkness, darkness. I'm like, look, man. I don't want no parts of that. Look where I am. Look where we are right now. Life is good. I got on clothes. I got a car. I got a nice bed to go sleep in. I'm not about to sit out here and talk about so-and-so and so-and-so for two and three hours, gossiping like a doggone hen. That ain't me, man. And I don't want to hear it ever again. Don't tell me about this again. And if that comes up again, then that person's cut off. I don't care who it is, relative, friend, it doesn't matter to me. Business acquaintance, to me, there's nothing more important to me than establishing my peace and my tranquility. Every single day, those are my mantras when I wake up. I want peace and I want tranquility today. And no matter what it takes, I'm cutting and cutting and cut like I'm cutting away the fat. I don't want it. And trust me, you'll be better for it. <laughs> Much better for it. Because those people aren't going to support you. They're not going to assist you. They're not going to be able to help you. They're going to drain you. They're going to suck the life out of you and turn you into a person 
that's dark and not grateful and not thankful. They're going to turn you into a gossiper, a hater, a troll. They're going to have you doing what they do. Stay away from them. They're like a virus. You want to be around people that are conscious, uplifting, happy, excited, grateful, thankful, helpful, supportive. That's what you want to be around. All right? Guys, it's been a great night. Don't forget we got the Forbidden Conscious Awards coming up July 30th in just a few days. Don't miss this event. There are still some tickets available. I'm going to play a short clip from the, uh, the promote promo that we made for the Conscious Awards. We got some amazing people that are going to be there, and I want to make sure you're there too. There still are some good seats left and some good locations, but it's filling up very, very fast. And we're giving away an Audi A4 for Forbidden Knowledge, an Audi A4 Turbo, live at the actual event. If you buy a ticket and you're sitting in the audience, you might get a car that night. We're going to sign the title over to you on the spot. All right. And you'll get the cameras on you and everything. We'll catch your reaction. And it's going to be an amazing, amazing night to remember. It's a black tie, red carpet affair. You'll be able to walk the red carpet, shake hands. Bring your books with you. If you have my books, bring them with you so I can sign them. All right? It's going to be an amazing night. And I'll be performing that night. I'll be on stage with Havoc from Mob Deep, Dame Dash, Donnie Arcade, Cruz, Kambada, and Richard Merritt from Black Magic 363 will be performing great songs and entertainment that night, as well as giving away amazing awards in 12 amazing categories, including a Lifetime Achievement Award. It's going to be an amazing night to remember in a very beautiful venue down in Miami, Florida at the Adrian Arts Center. You don't want to miss this event. It's going to be an actual life-changing event and the first event of its type in history. Nobody has ever done it on this level. Nobody's ever created an award ceremony on the level of the Oscars, on the level of the MTV or the BET Awards, on the level of the Grammys or Emmys for the conscious community. We're giving people their flowers while they're still alive. And I'll tell you what else is going to happen because of this. People are going to see this, this show, this award ceremony, and they're going to realize, wow, this is great. Those expressions and the thankfulness and the gratitude those people are experiencing is phenomenal. I'd like to experience that one day. Let me work harder. Let me step my game up. Let me produce better content. Let me be more consistent with what I'm doing. And maybe one day I'll get recognized like that. Even though we don't do it for the recognition, we would be idiots and fools to deny the fact that we like to have people tell us thank you and express gratitude for us. So it's going to be an amazing night to remember. I'm going to drop the link in the comments real quick while you watch this short clip. Hey, everybody. It's Billy Carson, also known as Forbidden Knowledge. I want to talk to you about a very special event coming up July 30th, 2023. The Forbidden Conscious Awards, the first annual event of its type. We're going to honor people who have been contributing to the conscious community for decades. People that you know and love that have helped you get to higher levels of thought and consciousness and awareness. And guess what? It's time to give them their flowers while they're still alive. It's going to be a live in-person event, but seats are going to sell out very fast. You want to make sure you're there in person for this amazing level event. It's going to be above the Oscars, above the Grammys. And guess what? You can help vote for the winners. Voting is available on ForbiddenKnowledge.com. And the categories are going to be social media influencer, podcast slash radio host, TV host, actor, director, producer, entrepreneurs, health and wellness, philanthropists, authors, field researchers, archaeologists, space anomaly hunters, and of course, a Lifetime Achievement Award. And you want to be there in person because I'm going to be speaking. That's right. I'll be your keynote speaker that night at the Forbidden Conscious Award. If you want to come to a mini conference, this is the place to be because I'm going to give you the knowledge that night as well as performances. We have celebrity guests performing. We'll have a halftime show where we're actually going to perform music for you. And don't forget about the pre-event mixer, where if you buy a box seat, you'll be in the VIP section. And you also have private access to a VIP mixer with celebrity guests. Shake hands, break bread, network, and then walk the red carpet with us and take amazing photos. It's going to be a night to remember. You don't want to forget this. And you help vote by going to ForbiddenKnowledge.com. Go to the Conscious Awards link. You can text in a vote for who you want for any category. 
as well as if you're out of the country, you can use the web form ballot to still vote for anyone you think is worthy of being honored that night. Make sure you hurry up and get your tickets because they're selling out very fast. I want to see you there for Bid and Conscious Awards 2023. All right. I want to see you there. The Forbidden Conscious Awards is going to be an amazing night. I, I, I'm really looking forward to this. I remember when I first uh, thought about this and Elizabeth and I were talking about it about a year ago, and now it's actually manifested into reality. It's here. It's happening. Uh, all these nominees, airplane tickets are booked. The hotels are all booked. Um, the, the camera crews are all booked. The, the music, the musicians are all booked. Everything is happening. It's a lot of work. Uh, the trophies have been bought, $12,000 in trophies to give out, $11,800, roughly $12,000 in trophies are being given out. High quality, high level, the highest of the highest. No trash, no garbage, no pieces of plastic. We're giving away a real sense of gratitude to people. When they hold on to that thing, they're going to be like, yes, I, I see now. They appreciate me for this. We're going to be um, doing a lot of great things that night. Chris Spencer is going to be the host. Chris Spencer, the famous comedian, actor, slash writer. He's actually hosted award shows before, like BET and MTV, and he's written for the uh, Emmys and the, and the Oscars and the Grammys. So we got the right person for the job, and he's going to tell some great jokes and keep everybody light and laughing that night. It's going to be a long night, but it's going to be a great night. The Audi A4 will be parked right at the front door of the venue with a big red bow on top. So as you're walking in to come towards the red carpet, you're going to walk right past the Audi. Someone will walk away with that car that night or drive away with that car that night. It's going to be an amazing night to remember. We want to see you there. Thanks for spending time with me tonight. Please share this video. Please click the like button. We need to get the algorithm going properly. Click the like button, please. And also, please share this video with everyone that you know. There's some life lessons in what I talked about tonight that can help shift somebody's consciousness and frequency in a whole nother direction. And that's what it's all about, guys. All right? Peace and love. I appreciate y'all. I will catch you later. All right?